Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be with you today to St. Matthew's United Methodist Church, and I have some good news. We have met our goal, $7,900. That's for the celebration of the church being 79 years old, and congratulations. Thank you for everyone who put in the efforts. Appreciate you. Obviously, our pastor is not here today. My name is Kent Sizer. I am a retired United Methodist pastor, and it's good to be here with you. And to those of you who are worshiping with us online, welcome. We're glad that you're here with us. Uh, I'd like to take just a couple of moments to lift up some things. Uh, we've all heard about the catastrophe occurring in Florida, South Carolina. And these are uh, times when we want to specifically lift up people. So for just a moment, I would like for us to lift up uh, Todd Terrell. Now, you may not know Ted, uh, Todd Terrell, but he is the founder and the president of the United Cajun Navy. Okay? You guys may have remembered those folks came over here to Houston after Harvey. What a blessing. These guys are out there working right now as we're sitting here safely in our pews, and they are rescuing people and pulling them to safety. And they have a lot of volunteers, but I thought it would be appropriate for us to pray for a moment, okay? So let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, we lift up your servant, Todd Terrell, and all the people of the United Cajun Navy who are at work at this very moment rescuing people from the floodwaters and from harm's way. We pray for your grace and mercy in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Good morning, <laughs> and welcome to St. Matthew's. Please respond to the call to worship. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a land from suffering? We shall sing of the courage and the strength of the Lord. How shall we sing the Lord's song when we feel so lonely? We shall sing the unity and faith of reconciliation and hope. Come, let us sing the Lord's song this day. Let us praise God in all our ways forever. Amen. Stand up, please, and uh, we'll sing the opening hymn.
please, please bow your heads for the opening prayer. Lord, throughout the world today, Christians are sharing in the sacrament of Holy Communion. We come together with a bountiful table set in the midst of struggle and strife. Help us to receive the elements of bread and wine for the nourishment of our souls and for the strengthening of our witness to your love for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, stand up again. We're going to do the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. We are conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. It, <clears throat> please join me in our Old Testament responsive reading. It comes from Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows there we hung up our lyres. For there our captors required us of us songs, and our tormentors mirth, saying, Sing one of those songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Let my tongue cleave to the top of my mouth, and I remember you. I do not say Jerusalem of my highest joy. O oh Lord, remember the Edomites the day of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. O oh Lord, remember against the Edomites the day of Jerusalem. How they, How they say, say raise, raise it, raise it, raise it down to, to the foundation. O oh, daughter of Babylon, you devastator, happy shall they be who repay you with what you have done to us. And happy shall, shall they be who take, take our ones and dash them, them against the rock. The Old Testament reading today is from Lamentations chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. How lonely the city sits that once was full of people. How like a widow she has become. She that was great among the nations. She that was a princess among the provinces has become a vassal. She weeps bitterly in the night with tears on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, she has no one to comfort her. All her friends have dealt uh, have dealt treacher treacherously with her, they have become her enemies. Judah has gone into exile with suffering and hard servitude. She now lives among the nations and finds no resting place. Her pursuers have all overtaken her in the midst of her distress. The roads to Zion mourn for no one comes to the festivals. All her gates are desolate, her priests groan, her young girls grieve, and her lot is bitter. Her foes have become the masters, her enemies prosper because the Lord has, taken, has made her suffer for the magnitude of her transgressions. Her children have gone away captives before the foe, from daughter Zion has departed all of her majesty. Her princes have become like stags that find no pasture. They have fled without strength before the pursuer.
so very lovely. Thank you. Friends and family at St. Matthew's, it's offering time. Let us, let us joyfully give to the kingdom of God and to St. Matthew's. There are offering boxes in the North X uh, ready to receive your offering. For our online worshipers, please note the ways of giving shown on your screen. Thank you for supporting the mission and ministries of St. Matthew's and being the hands and feet of Christ in this community and beyond. Please join me in the offertory prayer. Holy One, you guide our lives with truth and love. You invite us to accept you with joy. We prayerfully present these tithes and offerings. We ask your blessing upon them and their givers. May they symbolize our renewed commitment to holding you as the guiding leader of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, stand up as you're able for the gospel hymn and remain standing for the gospel reading. Our gospel reading comes from the book of Luke, chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to that mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would, ask, would, would say to your slave, who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come <clears throat> here, come here at once and take your place at the table. Would you not uh, rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink. Later, you may eat and drink. 
do you thank the slave for doing uh, do you thank the slave for doing what is commanded so you also when you have done all that you were ordered to do say we are worthless slaves we have done only what we ought to have done this is the word of the lord thanks be to god you may be seated Good morning, again. <laughs> well, this has been quite the week, hasn't it? My goodness. Last week we were anticipating a hurricane. Now it has come and it is hopefully over for a period of time, but we never know. Now, earlier we just heard a text. Uh, we were, Kay was mentioning it before the service, that one, 137 Psalm, the text of terror. The one about dashing the children against the rocks. What a horrible thing to do. But our scriptures talk about all the emotions that can come to bear on humanity. It is something that we all feel from time to time. A sense of revenge. A sense of taking that which has been wronged and turning it right. What in the world can possibly change a wrong that has occurred in one's life. We've heard about the, the lamentations last week. We were anticipating Jeremiah's uh, anticipation of the disaster of the Babylonians. And sure enough, it came true. King Nebuchadnezzar came and he conquered all of Israel, including the city of Jerusalem. And it is in those times when an entire nation has been destroyed that we hear the words in Psalm 137. What in the world can we do or say to change this reality? And I have one word for that. Faith. Faith. So in Luke chapter 17... Verses 5 through 10, the, the apostles are saying this. Lord, increase our faith. Now, increasing faith is a difficult thing to do. It appears to be a gift. But it looks like something that can be paid into. Like you go to the restaurant and you say, one pound of Heavy-duty faith, please, right? Something we can order. Let's take a look more closely at this particular passage, but before we do, I'd like to have a little bit of fun with you, all right? So two nuns are traveling down the road in the country. They've just lost, left the hospital where they're working, and lo and behold, they run out of gas. So they're by the side of the road, and a trucker comes along and pulls over and offers them help and discovers that they've run out of gasoline. So he offers to give them some gasoline out of his own tank. He says, but I don't have a pail. I don't have a bottle to give to you. Do you have anything? And one of the sisters said, oh, yes, I have something. So she goes to the back of her trunk. She takes out a bedpan, <laughs> and she offers it. <laughs> to the trucker. He says, that'll work. So he siphons off a little gasoline in there. Then he leaves and says goodbye to him. And there are the nuns standing there, and they're pouring very delicately the gasoline into the gas tank. And along comes a police officer and pulls behind him. And he says, now, I got to hand it to you, sisters. I don't think that's going to work, but I should, sure do admire your faith. <laughs> you know, in times of distress, we all need a little bit of kick in the pants sometimes to remind us that vengeance isn't necessarily the best actions to take. And this particular scripture passage reminds me of the hazards of being faithful. These apostles are hanging it all out on the limb. 
Uh, we're taking a look now at, at the book of Luke. And we, we have to deal with this word faith. My brother Kendall uh, was asking me this last week, he said, Kent, what is faith? And I'll have to admit to you, it hit me kind of hard and strange. I said, well, you know, I've been trying to figure out that for the last several years. It's one of those things. What is faith? We say it every week. What is faith? So this word faith in the context of the book of Luke that we're going to take a look at here has thorns in it, I'll have to say. Because as you look through the book of Luke, you'll see that it means different things. For instance, the observation is that faith that can be expounded upon is a gift. But in addition to being a gift, it is also something that has already been caught by people. They have learned faith somehow. How is that possible? Have you ever met somebody that has tremendous faith? Maybe they're the poster child of faith. Have you ever seen that person? A person who just exudes positivity and trust and obedience. Have you seen that person? Well, the apostles see the, the faith as a gift. The apostles meaning not disciples. The apostles are the core group, the 12 people that Jesus has recruited to be with them 24-7. They're learning, they're doing, they're praying, and they're, they're, they're students. And Jesus observes something outside of this little circle. It's a non-Jewish people and Gentiles. And he, he seems to be saying to his disciples, O ye of little faith. And he says, you need to have more faith. And then when the disciples say, increase our faith, then he says something totally different. Did you read that text? It's, wow, what about this? If you had the faith of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, be cast into the sea. You remember that? Jesus says it doesn't take a whole lot of faith in order to accomplish great things. Jesus uses hyperbole to demonstrate the impossible becoming possible. Don't get stuck on that mulberry tree. You're going to be on a limb for a long time. <laughs> So, in this Luke passage, faith is not only a gift, but it is a virtue. Now, let's listen carefully. In Luke chapter 7 is this incredible story about a woman who has been moved so deeply by the teachings and character of Jesus that she's moved to tears. So much so that she doesn't even see the Pharisees at this big banquet table, and they're all getting ready to eat, and Jesus is the guest. She comes in there, and she weeps, and she cleans the feet of Jesus. And on top of that, she pours expensive perfume on Jesus' feet. Now, the righteous... Pharisees did absolutely nothing in terms of hospitality for Jesus. They're at table. You're supposed to wash each other's feet. The servants are supposed to wash each other's feet. That has not been done. Protocol number one, off the table. A woman has been touched, and she gives the gift of hospitality moves so much that she has to give it. And Jesus says something very interesting about this woman. Listen to this. This is incredible. Luke chapter 7, I believe it's verse 12. Okay. Ooh. 
Well, he says, your faith has, has made you whole. Go in peace. Now, your faith has made you whole. He recognizes something that's outside of the religious sphere. He's noticing something about a precious woman who has not been invited to table, and yet with great faith, she enters into a hostile environment, and she gives a precious gift. Rule number one, faith requires courage. Courage to act. Did you hear that? Now, Luke not only sees this as a virtue, but he's also noticing that with this virtue comes the ability to exercise faith and not to expect any reciprocation whatsoever. Now, that's pretty hard. How many of you have been offended because you gave a gift and they didn't give you a gift back? Oh, my goodness. I know I have. Man, that's a tough one. We, we give and we give and we give and we expect something in return sometimes. And Jesus is saying, no, you're not going to get that. Listen again to this, this passage of Scripture. It's incredible. It says here, who among you would say to your slaves who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Such an odd passage, isn't it? Slaves, we don't, that doesn't really gravitate towards us any longer. Do you Thank the slave for what he is doing, what was commanded. So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, you are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. Such a strange thing. And yet, in the book of Luke, he illustrates this further by talking about a very powerful Gentile that lives in Capernaum that northern part of the Sea of Galilee, that little town where Jesus set up his little uh, area to study for a year. It is this centurion who has built the synagogues. He has, he has put his life work in it. He is faithful to do things that no one else is doing. And his slave is sick. And so... He calls to Jesus, who's nearby. He asks for his friends to go and talk to Jesus to see if he might come and heal his servant. Now, that's another incredible story. This guy is a Gentile. He is not a religious Jew. And yet, in Luke, he's pointing out this incredible story about someone who is outside of the Jewish faith. So here in Luke chapter 7, it says, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, says the centurion. Therefore, I do not presume to come to you, but only speak the word and let my servant be healed. For I also am a man under authority with so soldiers under me, and I say to one, go, and he goes. To another, come, he comes. And to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard these things, he was amazed. And turning to the crowd that followed him, he said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. Faith. Faith, the ability to speak a word and to obey that word and to do it. Now, I think Luke might be a little bit enamored by these soldiers, don't you? But it is the key concept that will allow the church to expand. This Gentile is generous and he needs help for one of his slaves 
and Jesus provides that. He turns home, and when the friends get back to the house, they discover that the slave has been healed. Wow. Amazing. So there is something about faith that requires us to use words. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You've heard that before. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. How many times have you wanted something to happen and it just hasn't happened yet? And you, you hope and you hope and you pray and you pray, and it's not happening. Faith, words, spoken in hope of that which has not been seen yet. That is faith. So faith can be a little bit confusing. To exercise one's faith means to obey and to trust. Oh, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Now, this little itty-bitty piece of faith is also recognized by Jesus when he's teaching a sermon about not worrying. We have a lot of stuff to worry about, don't we? My goodness. But Jesus says this, But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? Now that little faith comes back again, doesn't it? Man, if I only had enough faith, give me one pound of wonderful faith, please. I need it right now. And Jesus says, no, you don't need a pound of faith. All you need is the faith of a mustard seed. That's sufficient. And yet, we continue to to think about this problem, this failure of faith that happens time and time again. It happens to the best of us. Think about Peter. Peter, who has pledged allegiance to Jesus, and he has said, I will follow you to the bitter end. I will be arrested, and I will be put on the cross with you. And Jesus says, no, Jesus says, no you will deny me three times, Peter. And it's this point that Jesus prays that Peter's faith will not fail. You know, sometimes when we get into a bind and life becomes hard, We want to give up. Peter could have given up right there. But then we never would have heard about the incredible story in Acts chapter 10 about Peter, who has a dream. Apparently he's up on the roof and he's he's smelling the delicious supper that's hitting his nostrils, and he, he goes into this wonderful sleep. And he has this vision about a centurion in Caesarea Philippi that's on the coast. And he's told by God to go over there and to eat with him and baptize this centurion. Wow. If Peter had given up, he would not have been able to convert the very first Gentile and we would not be sitting here today. It would become a little sect of the Jewish faith. It would have died on the vine. Do you see how important your actions are? Do you see how important what you are doing makes a difference? Now, just a moment ago, before when this worship service was beginning, I spoke to you about the United Kingdom Cajun Navy, and about a person who helped to start this little movement. 
during Katrina, a loose band of, of volunteers got together and began helping people out of the water and taking them to safety. And today, they have over 4,000 volunteers who are working right now as we, we talk, saving people out of the treacherous waters and dangerous situation in Florida, as well as in South Carolina, I believe, too. Now, these are times when we could just be silent and say, oh, I give up, I can never do anything. But you have the ability to do many things with your faith. Your faith requires words. All you need to do, Jesus, is say the word. You do not have to be present, says the centurion. I know that God will act upon your word. I know that this first memory about a faithful centurion will interact with our hearts today and will make a difference in someone's life. Because these are words. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Amen. Now, this is Holy Communion Sunday, as I've mentioned. This is a time when people from all nations gather together and celebrate the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper is here. It's not for a select few. It's for everyone. As Jesus said in Luke and in Acts, this table has been set before us so that all may come forward and participate in the forgiveness and love that God provides to us. So now, as we prepare our hearts for this time, let us sing our hymn. One bread, one body.
Christ, our Lord, invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you'd like to participate in the musical, it'll, musical opening will be page 21 in your hymnal. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made it with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread. Do we have those who are participating? Please come forward. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. I'm a little rusty on this. <laughs> Please forgive me. Go ahead, guys. Yeah. All right. That's good. All right. Jesus took the bread. He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks to you. Then he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, drink. This is the blood of the new covenant shed for many for the forgiveness of sin. And so, 
in remembrance of these mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice from the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. With the confidence of your children, let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For those of you who are online today, prepare yourselves by taking your cup and your wafer that has been provided for you. Those of you who are in the pews that require, would like to have this are also here. We do have bread and we have non-leavened bread here for those who desire that as well. the body of Christ given for you, take and eat in remembrance of him. Please come forward.
Now, if you will join with me in the, ooh, I see eternal God. Thanksgiving after communion. Read with me, please, together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So the invitation of Christian discipleship is with you. The invitation is at hand. What this means is you are invited to come forward and be a part of this community of faith. If it is a desire to the Christian faith, then I ask you if you will make God, your Christ, your Lord and Savior, to be the one whom you will depend upon one whom will be the author and perfecter of your faith. That's a big step. And it requires us to overcome some things in our lives, like revenge. It requires for us to overcome some things, like our wanton desire to be bigger than God. And that's a big one. It's something that we have to allow God to God's voice to be heard through all the noise. If you're willing to do that, then come forward. You will be baptized in the faith when our pastor comes back from her vacation, and you'll have an opportunity to stand before the congregation and make your, your desire known. Okay? So thank you. Now let's stand and let's sing our last hymn. And by the way, I can't see the uh, display because of the big red thing right there. Right. <laughs> Remember that song from youth group. <laughs> All right, what a great song. So the words are before you. You've been here. You've heard the word. The word is faith. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. When you work in the world, you will find people that are against you. You will find it difficult to maneuver. You'll feel like you're in the mud and the mire. But have faith. Now, may the blessings of Christ go with you throughout the world. Amen. Amen. Amen.